For the moment, he is one of 384 prisoners at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in the Loop. One day soon, he will likely be ordered to serve his prison term, which now totals 20 years, in some other federal prison. He is 37-year-old James Lewis, the man convicted of writing the notorious Tylenol extortion letter, then running from the law during a nationwide manhunt until his arrest in New York City in December of 1982. What was it like to be on the run, knowing that every law enforcement agency in the country was looking for you? It is terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Can you imagine trying to tell your wife that, honey, I, uh, I wrote a letter. Uh, oh yeah? Well, there's something else I need to tell you. The, uh, they're talking about it in the radio and on TV. <laughs> go on, go on. Just trying to explain that to your wife. How did she take that? She uh, just sat and stared at the wall for a while. How could you have done such a thing? So then you found yourselves running from the law. Didn't really run that much. We just moved to another hotel and uh, just a few blocks away and uh, didn't really hide. We were out on the streets in New York every day. Uh, for example, the Thanksgiving Day Parade, the Macy's uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade at Herald Square, there were about 400 policemen uh, standing waiting to get their orders on where they were going to be stationed. My wife and I walked hand in hand through all of those people at the time that this big manhunt was going on. We did not hide. As he did throughout his trial, Lewis says he wrote the letter only to focus attention on his wife's former employer, Lewis suspected of financial wrongdoing. In that letter, Lewis had asked that one million dollars be placed in the man's bank account. Okay. The letter itself is not illegal unless you have the intent. And there is no way that I could have possibly had any intent there. The bank account was a closed bank account. It was at Continental Illinois Bank. Uh, I had no more access to that bank account than one of you gentlemen here. Don't you feel you exploited a lot of people's fears and made worse an already near hysterical situation with all of those poisoning deaths? It was not my intention to do that number one. Number two, I did not release that letter to the public. The FBI released that letter to the public and injected it into that situation with the public. Lewis feels he was convicted because U.S. Attorney Dan Webb led the jury in the case to connect him with the Tylenol murders, not merely the letter. He not only talked about each and every one of the, the homicides, he also came up with hypothetical homicides and uh, it was almost as if he had rhetorically hurled each one of those bodies at each of the jurors. Uh, you could really see that fear on the juror's face when uh, he was going through his closing argument. And he talked very little about the piece of paper. Did you feel then that you were on trial for the Tylenol murders? I did. Did you commit the Tylenol murders? I did not. Do you know who did? I, <clears throat> I do not know who did, no. What do you want to say to the people of Chicago, and to the country for that matter? Uh, how should they look upon James Lewis? How should they view you today? I think that is something that you're going to have to take a while to look at. I've been subjected to an awful lot of, of uh, statements in the press by government and a lot of other people. It is very, very difficult to overcome that much in the way of hostile statements. I have been the officially designated evil one by the, by the Justice Department. When one gains that status, if there is such a thing as a status, it's a horrible status to have. When one is the focus of that much hatred, it is virtually impossible for a person to convince very many people that uh, he is not as he has been described. It will take a while and uh, uh, I am working on that and I will keep working on that and I will keep fighting on that for as long as I can.